trials. Meanwhile, while the country has never seen anything quite like the made-for-the-screen trial that is starting today in New York, in 10 days, the Supreme Court is going to consider the claim that Donald Trump is immune from prosecution for any and all actions made during the time that he was in office. It's a question looming over federal criminal charges stemming from his attempts to subvert the 2020 election and a decision that could have wide implications on the three other cases he's fielding, including the classified documents case, as well as setting a precedent for all of us for all future time. Joining us now is MSNBC chief legal correspondent and host of The Beat, Harry Melber. So, Harry, the Trump legal team has filed a new brief today ahead of next week's oral arguments in the Supreme Court that's on the 25th of April, in which he is claiming that Ford's, President Ford's pardon of President Nixon, which, as you recall, Michael Beschloss and John Meacham were talking about earlier in our program today, supports Trump's argument that ex-presidents should be immune for any office-related acts unless impeached and convicted. Quote, it says the respondent argues that DOJ's admission that the prosecution of a president is necessarily political applies only to sitting presidents and politicization vanishes once the president leaves office. In light of not one, but four hyper-politicized prosecutions pending against President Trump, in addition to politically motivated civil cases, this argument cannot be taken seriously. It also contradicts President Ford's pardon statement on President Nixon. Now, I'm not a lawyer, Ali, but I remember this is, to me, President Ford pardoned Richard Nixon because he wanted to avoid a prosecution for an ex-president that would take place after the president had resigned in disgrace to avoid uh, conviction on his impeachment. Exactly. Let, let's remember that the former president's team has lost every round on this piece. The question not of whether he's guilty, but whether he can, in fact, as a citizen, be charged. And everyone knows he can, and that's the history, and that's the precedent. And the Ford pardon goes the other way. The whole reason, as you mentioned, that Nixon needed and accepted uh, what was a controversial pardon was that otherwise he could be prosecuted. He worried about going to bed in a prison cell. He mused about that, and he took the pardon for that reason. This new claim uh, by the president and former president's lawyers is, is so weak. It's such a bad legal argument that I would say it is, number one, embarrassing, uh, although the lawyers may have been felt inclined they needed to make it because their client demanded it. Uh, but it's embarrassing, number one, and two, it's probably counterproductive. I don't think it's the kind of argument that will appeal to the Supreme Court. It almost uh, projects a, a bit of a circus-like, upside-down, Alice in Wonderland quality. And let's also remember, this is the same case where Trump's lawyers also claimed a kind of license to kill. Uh, that a president could theoretically assassinate Americans, innocent American opponents, politically, uh, and never be held accountable for it. Uh, these aren't just bad arguments. They're likely to backfire in oral argument at the Supreme Court. Um, let's talk about the timing issues here, Ari. When the Supreme Court agreed to hear the case last month, it set <clears> what it called an expedited schedule. What does that do um, to an expected timeline for the decision, and how might that timeline affect everything else? Yeah, I mean, I think the practical way the Supreme Court has weighed in has slowed this all down. They didn't even necessarily take the case. But by their standards, which are different than, say, out-of-court normal life standards, if you said to someone, hey, I, I want to have lunch with you on an expedited basis, I'll see you in, in <laughs> six or eight weeks, uh, that wouldn't necessarily land. But for them, it's a little faster than usual. We don't know how they'll rule. We do know that controversial or divisive cases where there's rewrites tend to come at the end of the session, not at the beginning. So. All we can say is they did slow things down. They do claim that they're going to get through it this term. And if they did it early enough, it is still possible, although frankly less likely, uh, that the trial could still start before the election. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.